Ladies and gents, welcome to the video. I'm Get Good Guy. <clears throat> I needed to clear my throat, and uh, we're just going to carry on. And uh, this is Battlefield 5 in the new 6.2 update, which everybody who plays is going to be aware of right now. But for weeks and maybe months now, I've been asked by people, you know, when is it worth coming back? Will the new time to kill be worth it? Let me know when it's good, all that kind of stuff. So rather than last month's, is this update worth your time? This is this month's, is this update slash new TTK worth returning to the game for? because the lost people left and they're waiting for that key reason to come back. So today I'm going to go over that. It is, I must stress, just my opinion. The only true way for you to know is to come and play it or to just outright decide you're not going to bother, <laughs> um, either way. But I'll go through the good, the bad and all that kind of stuff and you can weigh it up. And if you are playing this update, then let me know what you think of it so far, good, bad, otherwise, in the comments below. And besides things to do with the update, I'll also go over relevant things from the past few weeks for those that have left the game. So some of you that are long term viewers may have heard some of the topics we go over, just be aware of that. So let's kick this off with yes we have a faster times kill again. And there are good and bad aspects of that. It is somewhat like the 5.0 update, so the times kill that everyone was pretty happy with back in the day. Not too long back actually, but you know, a few months ago. But it's not exactly the same. I have done a 16 minute analysis of that TTK in another video if you want to go and find it. But for today, I think the balance is pretty good. There are some glaring errors with certain slower firing weapons not being as good as they should be in their optimal range. But thankfully nothing is absolutely trash that I've found so far. Some things, even if they're not as good as they should be, can still do good work. The grease gun is pretty popular despite it being not quite as good in its optimal range as I think it should be, but still its stability and its suppressor is making it pretty potent for some people, and a lot of people are happy to have that lethality back in the game again. Not just, you know, lightly tickling people from range. Because a bit of light tickling's alright sometimes, but not in Battlefield. Unless you've, you know, close mates with your allies in the squad, or really that's getting off the point. But yeah, you can, <laughs> you can drop buddies again pretty quickly. But that does mean that you can get dropped pretty quickly as well. Just be aware of that. You may have to alter your playstyle a bit if you were used to the slower time to kill again. But if you were used to the original time to kill, this is like that, but actually kind of a little bit more forgiving. There's not quite as much range damage as then. Things have been rebalanced a bit. Some people like that, some people won't, but the point still remains. It's close to what we had before, but not the same. Now this does mean we have a different meta, both different to the original time to kill and the slower time to kill. And part of that is also having new guns that weren't around during the original time to kill. So, semi-auto rifles are back to being the dominant force. If you liked that, then great. If you didn't, then uh, this, <laughs> this might not be for you. People are getting three or four tapped from a lot of ranges right now with relative ease. The semi-autos are kind of nasty. The balancing is maybe a little bit questionable, but they're, they're fantastic. I will also say though that there are less guns that aren't viable than in the slower time to kill. There are a lot of things that aren't as good as other things still. That's what a meta is. And some things are actually just underpowered, but there's a smaller amount of guns that are just a complete waste than in the slow times kill, which is a definite positive. So there's a bit more variety and offer to you, whether you want to go for the absolute top meta or just things that are, you know, passable, if you want to just have some fun. Faster firing SMGs are still absolutely slapping people at close range. The Type 2A is still very good in my opinion, but the Thompson and the Suomi are fantastic as well. The ZK3 3 with a faster rate of fire is great. The Type 100 is great. Even things like the EMP, if you want to just go for straight up hip fire, can be really good. And so overall, the balance is, I think, flawed, but still much, much better. And that will be a pleasant surprise for a lot of you returning to the game if you left when we had the bullet sponge model, but still expect some of you to not like it if you didn't like the faster TTK, okay? And this has changed up some of the guns and the experience, so it might be fresh for some of you regardless of when you left. New things to try, new performance from some guns, new things being selected by the enemy for you to go up against. It can be kind of refreshing. It's a decent point in the game's life cycle compared to some other points in the past, or a lot of other points in the past. So we're going to take that as a positive. This does also mean there is more recoil, but I'm actually seeing it kind of be complained about and praised at the same time. Uh, some on PC are saying the recoil is crazy. Less so, but still some are saying that on console. Um, I actually play on Xbox and I think there's still barely any recoil on a lot of guns, but that's just me. Um, it's very mixed feedback at the minute, so it's going to be down to you and your personal preferences. But yes, there is more than there was in the slower times kill, so there's a bit more skill involved now, although some people are complaining about the return to a random recoil model, which does actually take away your power to affect all of your gunfights consistently. Sometimes the recoil is random and there's not too much you can do about it if it just does something unexpected or it's inconsistent or whatever else. So keep that in mind and if you do come back and play, let me know what you think because I'm kind of torn on the whole matter at the minute as well. I'm still doing well, I'm still enjoying the gunplay as it is, but I'm keeping my mind open 
to be swayed either way at the minute after more play, hearing more opinions and seeing more data. But it's important to say that I think more people will enjoy this than dislike it, especially again compared to what we've just had recently. Unless of course you are a less able player and you're struggling to land your shots, it may take some time to get used to it or to get the practice in and you will be getting mullered from a lot of ranges and different directions again, so don't be surprised if you get stomped on a bit, if you're not particularly good or you're rusty or whatever else. It's all just part of gaming, we've all got to get better sometimes, but if you don't enjoy that then, you know, maybe this isn't a great time for you. It can be quite a punishing experience. Now some people are complaining that it's more passive now, more MMGs, more snipers, stuff like that, more long range play, um, I, I'm not feeling like that so far. Again these are early days, but I'm not gonna lie, I, I don't feel that. Uh, it may have shifted a little bit, but I'm still seeing quite a lot of aggressive play, I'm still seeing a lot of people running around with SMGs, and I'm still not having issues playing passive or playing aggressive, it just depends on the mode, the situation, the players you're up against, all that kind of stuff, but I'm open to hearing what you guys think either way. Everyone's perceptions are different, but no, I, I don't think it's really campy at the minute, and I don't think MMGs are anywhere near as potent as they were before, in fact I know they're not looking at the stats. Snipers, you still have to be very good with them to make them worthwhile, even with better bullet velocity. They're still nowhere near as versatile and forgiving as using a semi-auto rifle or a self-loading rifle, so I'm not bothered about those either. But as stated, this can all change over time with more play. But if you use a controller, or you play against people with a controller, do be aware there is now snap lock on aim assist or auto rotation, so it is easier for people to lock onto you now, the game does a bit of the work for you, which is a real shame, but we've almost just got to get used to it because DICE has said they're not going to change it. I hope they change their mind, but I, I'm not sure about that. But back to some positives, let's keep it balanced. Uh, there do seem to be more full lobbies now, in my early impressions, although again this is early, maybe it will taper off over time, but I'm having less issues finding games to join, which is great, almost certainly means there's more people playing, and those are good signs at the minute, which does highlight how DICE shouldn't have screwed around with the time to kill and the weapon balance multiple times, because people just kind of like how the game was anyway, and a lot of people would actually like us to just go back to the 5.0 model, but regardless, this is what we've got now, I hope we keep this and just go for tweaks rather than sweeping changes, and I think that will keep a lot of people happy and hopefully keep more people playing the game, although probably not everyone that's currently playing right now, that's just the nature of the beast. Obviously then there is more content now than when some of you left the game, more guns, more maps, uh, I think that the Solomon Islands map, the latest one to come out, is absolutely fantastic on every mode I've played it on so far, which is great, even improving breakthrough where there were too many tanks initially, now there's less for the attacking team and the balance is much better. Fair play to DICE for that map, it's really good, it's from the people that designed Argon Forest I hear, so that makes sense because I really enjoyed that map as well, as did a lot of people in BF1. And as stated, some of the guns are really cool they've added as well, the Grease Gun with a Suppressor, the Type 2A, which has caused a lot of rage, but the, the Type 2A with a super fast rate of fire, the Type 11 LMG which is very accurate, there's things, there's options, it's cool, there's a lot you can use. But of course there are still less modes than we would like, due probably to lower player numbers to actually fill out all these modes, but I and many others miss. Front lines, rush, domination, all that kind of stuff, it's a real shame they're not in the game, and they were the reason I bought the game by the way, the objective small modes, so they, they just aren't in the game anymore, which is a real bummer for me and people like me, and I think if something's in the game is expected to have it, is advertisers having it, it should probably keep it, or at least most of it, but that's just my opinion. There are, I believe, less massive bugs, but still some. There are still issues with games just freezing up and quitting, or people not being able to join friends, all that kind of stuff. I don't know if BF5 will ever rid itself of all those kind of bugs, but I think there are less of these super major ones, even if there are still some, but of course there are still lots of small ones, which can get very irritating. I do personally feel if you're coming back to the game, or you've still been playing it, it's much better if you just don't take it too seriously. There's a lot of annoying things in the game, such as bugs, bad spawns, I could go on, and, and it can be very annoying. I really do apologise to whoever was playing with me in a squad the other day, when I didn't realise I wasn't in a party, and my rating was probably coming through the squad voice chat. Uh, <laughs> I hope you enjoyed that. Yeah, sometimes it can be just too much, and you have to turn the game off, but I do enjoy the game more than at some points in the past, which again is kind of a positive. Playing in an organised squad is better if you can, playing with friends if they play. Uh, squads can dominate at the minute with a lack of an effective team balancer, so yes, do expect lopsided lobbies, both for quality of player and for numbers on each team sometimes. It's a real shame, but that is still a problem. Hopefully they'll get to that soon, but it remains to be seen. But a big thing at the minute is lag, poor netcode, dying round corners. There seems to be a resurgence of those issues, and it's a real shame. I don't know if DICE will sort it out. And uh, oh, and vehicles. I always talk about the infantry stuff, because I'm an infantry player. Vehicles may feel a bit different. There have been some patches. Uh, they're still kind of cumbersome and slow and not very good at pushing, and much better at sitting from afar, which is not to everyone's, or 
actually not to most people's tastes. Um, a big one is tank HE shells have now been slowed down their velocity, so it's not as easy to snipe people from range, so that's cool. And then probably the biggest point, we cannot tell what DICE will do moving forwards. That is a constant. Their management is kind of all over the shop, as I have covered before. So right now the game's in a decent, not great, but not bad spot, a decent spot. I'm hoping they take this momentum and run with it in the way that they didn't with the Pacific update. But again, that remains to be seen. But right now, I am at least kind of happy. And you may be too, but you're going to have to make up your own mind. And that is my coverage of if this update is worth you coming back to Battlefield 5 for. Some of you will think yes. Some of you will think no. Let me know in the comments below. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please do hit the like button. It does mean a lot to me. It helps me to grow. If you're new here, consider subscribing and maybe turning on notifications. I have loads of content coming out. I've been very, very consistent for a little while now, so don't miss out if you like what I do. And all the links to my social media, including Patreon, can be found in the description and my pinned comment. Here is the Board of Awesome for the epic people who already support me on Patreon. They're all absolute heroes, and I love them all deeply and, of course, often. If you want to join them on the Board of Awesome, the link to the Patreon page is in the description and my pinned comment. And with that all said, I'm Get Good Guy, and I'll see you next time. Laters. So, I think the Type 2A right now is fairly well balanced, but these are initial impressions and this may alter over time. Um, I think it does have more recoil now, as the patch notes and community update indicated. It was something I felt like I was having to deal with. It did hamper my ability to contest at certain ranges 